The following message is a presentation of Valley Metro Church, a community of believers dedicated to knowing God and making Him known. And I wanted to start out with saying thank you. I wanted to start out with saying thank you to you. Thank you for making uh, your first day of the week uh, a time where you prioritized coming to God's house, uh, where you made God first. He says he honors those who put him first, so thank you for putting God first. I also want to thank those of you who serve here uh, to make this happen. I want to say thank you so much for your time, your effort, your diligence to be selfless and to serve others. Uh, to make this church happen and all the amazing things you do on levels, some are unseen. Thank you so much. And for those of you who support the ministry financially, I want to say thank you. You help us keep things going to bless other people and bless our community and beyond. Thank you so much. For those of you who are reaching out to your neighbors and loving God and loving others, thank you for representing Jesus the way we're called to do it. Thank you. For those of you who are discovering your gifts and learning how to serve him in other places on the job, thank you. This is really uh, what it's about. That's the kingdom of God. But thank you for stepping into the dimensions of the kingdom uh, that you're stepping into. It's really amazing. Uh, I want to talk to you today about our thanks because as I was praying this week, I, I really sensed the Lord say we need to go here a little bit more deeply uh, this week on the theme of thanks, on the theme of, of gratitude, and oftentimes we, we thank people when we receive something, or we thank people when we feel the sense of gratitude. But I want to encourage you today um, that, that, our, that our gratitude cannot just be tied to our feelings. And if you only get one thing out of today, get this. Our gratitude cannot just be tied to our Feelings. There's some dimensions in God's word, we're going to explore them today, that we're going to see that gratitude uh, can be the key component that you're missing in your life for breakthrough, literally breakthrough. If you wonder spiritually where you're at, emotionally, spiritually, like, God, what's going on? I feel like I'm in this zone, and I've been in this zone for a long time. Gratitude may be the number one thing that helps you level up in what God wants to do in your life. And we're going to see in the Bible where gratitude and thanksgiving uh, literally broke through on, on completely uh, amazing levels in people's lives. And I don't know how you place gratitude in your life. I don't know if you consider yourself a thankful or a grateful person. Uh, but honestly, in preparing this message, I had to check my own heart because I realized, Lord, I overlook things all the time. And, and Lord, you've been gracious to me, and I, sometimes I do, and a lot of times I don't. And I had to just repent on my own, saying, Lord, help me to be more grateful. Help me to see uh, what I do not see, or if I see it, to be grateful for what I do see. See, some things, sometimes we, we don't even see things that we should be grateful for, and other times we see them, but we don't act on that with, with our gratitude. And so uh, I, I felt the Lord expressing that to me, but I do want to stress that this topic of gratitude can be the very thing that helps you break through to a whole nother level in your walk with God and your spiritual walk with Jesus. Gratitude is that big, it's that important, it's that monumental, and I want to encourage you, since it is so important, if you're a note taker, to write just a few things down today, just a few key points and uh, whether you use your phone to write it down or on a bulletin. But here's, here's the first one, and we're going to jump into some scriptures. The first one is this. Gratitude is not a feeling. Gratitude is a choice. And we're going to see that in scripture today. We're going to unpack that with quite a few uh, illustrations from scripture to see just how clearly true that is from God's perspective. Gratitude is not a feeling. It's a choice. Now, sometimes we feel grateful and we say thank you, but even if we don't feel it, we're going to see the choice of gratitude and how it manifests into profound and powerful things. Um, our key passage today is going to be Psalm 100. If you guys have your Bible, if you want to turn there or on your phone, your device, I have a few other scriptures I want to share, but instead of flipping around, we're just going to throw them on the screen for you up here uh, so you can follow along. And uh, so Psalm 100 is where we will, we will go together. Uh, the first scripture I just want to share with you for the screen up here is out of Ephesians. And this is, this is amazing. It's, uh, Ephesians 5.20 says this. talks about giving thanks always 
and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. To give thanks always and for everything. And it's not a suggestion and it's not a feeling. It's actually an encouraging command for you and I to be appreciative people, to give thanks always and for everything. And we don't think about giving thanks always because sometimes we don't feel like it. But I'm encouraging you, there's a profound level of breakthrough to be found if we can discover what Scripture's talking about, always giving thanks. What would that look like? What would that look like if I actually had gratitude in my heart and I was expressing it to the Lord always? Would I be a different kind of person? Would God be doing different things in my life if gratitude had this kind of expression in my life? Uh, giving thanks always and for everything. That's another thing. When we, we think about everything, a lot of us say, well, I don't want to give thanks for certain things because certain things I just don't like. I only want to give thanks for the things that I like. But we're going to see that even some of the things you don't like, God's got a bigger picture going on. And if you and I can grow in our walk with Christ, if we can grow in our spiritual maturity, that we will be moving towards this uh, scripture right here, to give thanks always and for everything. Again, today we're going to see some scriptural examples of exactly what this looks like and what it can look like in, in your life and in mine. So when we uh, think of this time of the year, some of you guys are getting ready to travel somewhere or have family uh, come into town. Uh, some of our uh, family, church family here is already on the road and heading out somewhere else. But this is the time of the year we think of at least the term Thanksgiving. And a lot of people associate that with just a big meal and don't go a whole lot further. They think this is the, the trigger for Christmas shopping and, and Black Friday sales and everybody gets into that zone. But but, but honestly, Thanksgiving goes back to the early pilgrims. And when people look at the pilgrim story, uh, historians oftentimes, some of them, will look at the first uh, Thanksgiving uh, from 1621 when a, a group of pilgrims shared with some friendly Indians and had a meal together. However, that was not the first Thanksgiving. Uh, you would have to go back 11 years earlier to Virginia for the earliest Thanksgiving, the original Thanksgiving, and it wasn't a feast. It wasn't a feast at all. In fact, the winter of 1610 at Jamestown had reduced the pilgrims, the community, the people, the family, the group who was all living there. It reduced them from 409 all the way down to 60. 409 down to 60. That's how brutal this winter was. So many, everyone in the family had lost somebody. The community went from 409 to 60. And the survivors, they prayed for help. God, please help us. We need you, God, please help us without knowing how or when the help might come from. But they, they praised God for what they had and they prayed for help. And when help arrived in the form of a ship that just happened to come sailing in, loaded with food, a prayer meeting was held, a prayer meeting. And it was a prayer meeting of thanksgiving. It wasn't the later thing with all the food and the Indians. Uh, it was the earlier thing of coming from a place of brokenness. God, please help us. God brings provision. And they're like, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's the first thanksgiving. So the second point this morning for all of us, I believe, to take to heart is that thanksgiving is not a meal. It's a heart condition. Thanksgiving is not a meal. It's a heart condition. We all think, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? Well, I'm having my meal here, or I'm having my meal there, or we're going here, or I'm cooking this. This is what we think of Thanksgiving. But Thanksgiving is not a meal. Thanksgiving is a heart condition. And that was modeled by the earliest pilgrims. We turned it into all kinds of stuff, but that's uh, what it is. And we got to learn, like they did, to thank God in our circumstances, whatever they are, to have an attitude for gratitude, an attitude of gratitude, no matter what's going on around us. How many of you guys would agree that um, every day is a gift from God, honestly? Every day is a gift. Tomorrow's not promised, the Bible says. How many would agree that every breath is a gift from God? Every breath is a gift from God. Um, I don't know if you know this, but we take, as humans, we take about 23,000 breaths a day, 23,000. So right now, looking at the time, everyone in the room, you're on about 18,000 right now. Excuse me, 23,000, you're on about, you're on about eight or 9,000 so far. You didn't know that. 9,001, 9,002, 9,003. 
We take 23,000 breaths in a day, and every breath is a gift from God. But have we ever stopped and thanked him for these breaths? Do we honestly even stop and thank him for the days, all of these gifts? And it goes to show that even God's people can take so much for granted and not even give gratitude for the grace that's been given to us. I mean, I don't know about you, but I would say it's time to be grateful, amen? It's time to be grateful, family. And we're going to see that roll out right here. Um, in 1860, uh, up on the Lake Michigan, there was a shipwreck in the freezing waters in Lake Michigan. And the waters were so freezing, and this one gentleman by the name of Edward Spencer, he tried wading out into these freezing waters to try to save people because people were going to die. And he swam out in the freezing waters, and he kept doing this again and again and again, and by the grace of God, he was able to finally save the lives of 17 passengers who would have drowned and froze to death in those waters. So he got everybody ashore, but to be honest with you, the, the process of what he went through in this freezing water for that duration, it took a serious toll on his own health. It damaged his own health. And years later, Edward Spencer died, and at his funeral, it was noted that not one of those people whose lives he saved ever returned to thank him. Not one. And it sounds alarming, but sometimes that's what we do. We just kind of, things happen and we just move on. And we don't even really stop to truly as assess the magnitude and the beauty or the sacrifice or, or the grace of somebody else or the grace of God. And as a result, we fail to turn around and share and express our gratitude um, I, I think it's really, really important. This is important because they were rescued, but guess what? You were rescued too. <laughs> God rescued you too. You're like one of those people on the boat, and I am too, if you're in Christ today, where you were rescued too. And we got to come back and say, thank you. Thank you. A lot of times we focus on ourselves and we focus on our lack instead of what we've been graced with. And when we focus on our lack, we're never going to be satisfied. We'll never be grateful people because we always look at what we're missing. Um, it's been said, he who needs nothing has everything. <laughs> she who needs nothing has everything. If you're satisfied, and the Bible talks about being content with what we have in our life, that it's a beautiful place to have our spiritual walk from a place of contentment. It doesn't mean that we don't have pursuits and goals. It just means that we're complete without those. Amen? We're complete in Christ without those things yet. We have to be complete from that zone. That's really, really important. But again, I want to suggest to you that this gratitude principle in the Bible in, uh, for the citizens of, of God, the children of God, uh, this, it's actually a command, not a suggestion, to be grateful. Gratitude is a, uh, an expectation God is calling us into as you grow in the Lord. Now, little kids, if you have little kids, we raised, raised five of them. Uh, they don't start out super grateful. Parents, can I get a witness on that one, right? They don't, so they throw in their food, you put it back, they throw it again. They're not very grateful, okay? You can cook them all stuff, they have no idea. But, but eventually, they start seeing and recognizing things. And it's the same with us in our spiritual walk. We start with a very base level. We don't really have much gratitude. But as you begin to grow in Christ, you should, you should be growing in knowledge and in grace, the Bible says. It says to grow in knowledge and in in grace and grace. And if you and I are growing in knowledge, praise God, that's good. We should understand the scripture, context, theology, doctrine, position, identity, who we are. Wonderful. But listen, if we're not growing in grace, we're missing it. And part of growing in grace is growing in gratitude and understanding what God's calling us into. Gratitude is a key part. And I, and I really feel strongly that for some of you here today in the room, gratitude is the missing link for your breakthrough. Gratitude is the missing link for your breakthrough. And what I mean by that is you, you love God and God loves you and you're trying, but you, you got some repetitive struggles. You got some repetitive uh, things where you're like, when is this going to end? And when am I going to be in another zone? At least the way I feel and the way I'm thinking and the way my heart is, what's it going to take? And for some of you today, it might be this very key thing, gratitude, that gratitude is maybe the thing blocking the next step. God wants to level you up as you grow in knowledge and in grace. And this may be one of the key um, points for you to grow in grace. This is what it says in First Thessalonians 5. And we're going to move on to our main text in a minute here. 
1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I don't know if you're catching that, but give thanks in all circumstances. And he's not saying just when you feel happy, just when you feel blessed, just when you feel like somebody gave you something really cool you didn't deserve. Oh, thank you. Yes, of course, thank you then. That takes no a heart condition or anything to thank somebody when you've been endowed with something really amazing. But he's not saying that. He's saying in all circumstances. And that's the challenge. You and I don't feel like it, but if we function in our feelings, we will be stuck forever on this topic and we will never grow in grace. But if we are learning as we walk with Jesus, as we are learning, and I'm learning this too, and I hope you are, as we're learning how to grow in grace, we will learn at the same time to give thanks in all circumstances, listen, it says, this is God's will for you. This isn't Pastor B's suggestion. This is God's will for your life. This is God's will for your life to learn how to be grateful. It's God's will for your life to learn how to be grateful, to express gratitude. It is God's will for your life. And as you grow in knowledge, please aim on growing in grace in this area And when you do, you're going to see God's will manifest in your life because the scripture says it is. And you're going to see some things begin to change. This is part of our growth process that that many skip out. You know, some people, this is close to their heart. They they highly respect and appreciate gratitude. And others, it's random. And others don't express it really at all. And uh, again, as I prepared this message, I caught myself going, wow, where do I and where do I not? And I really came under a conviction not condemnation, but a conviction of gratitude and the expression of it that God is calling me into and I trust he's calling you into it as well. Philippians 4, 6 says this, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation uh, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So he's saying anything in your life that's creating anxiety, anything in your life, think of it, whatever it is, anything in your life, that is creating anxiety. Saying, don't be anxious, take that very thing, the very issue that you're worried about, the struggle you're having, the problem, the weight, the concern, the dilemma, the deficit, whatever this thing may be, whatever this burden create, causing an anxiety in your life. He says, take it before the Lord with prayer and petition, but listen, don't just bring it and go, God, I got this issue. He says, bring it with thanksgiving. Give it with, bring it with gratitude. And most people miss this. What do you mean bring a, I got an issue over here. I'm weighed down by it. How am I supposed to bring it other than a burden? He says, when you bring this anxiety, when you bring your prayer and your petition, do it with thanksgiving. Do it like, Lord, thank you for today. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, Lord, for my health. Thank you, Lord, for my salvation. Thank you, Lord, for my eternity. Thank you that your plans for me are good and not to harm me. Thank you, Lord, that you, you've called me into a purpose, that you have, thank you, God, for all of these things, God. Thank you. And Lord, with that thanks, I have this prayer and petition for you. And here's what's causing me anxiety. Boom, and drop it on the Lord. And that's the, what the Bible says to do as a, as a matter of course for you and I. For those of us who are trying to grow in knowledge and in grace, this is a key part. Uh, The last one I want to share before we jump into our our main text is Psalm 50, verse 23. Psalm 50, verse 23. I love this one. Uh, You know, this one really rocked me this week because I never read it this way before. And sometimes you read a scripture and you're like, how did I miss that? How did I miss that? I've skimmed over this, read this a bunch of times. I never, this time it jumped out. It says this in Psalm 50, 23. It says, but giving thanks is a sacrifice. Everyone say sacrifice. Giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. God is saying, listen, you might not always feel like being grateful. You might not always feel like expressing gratitude. It might be hard to express gratitude when you're in a trial, when you're going through some kind of struggle, when you're, when you're anxious about something or you're, you have a need in your life. It might be hard to express gratitude. But listen, giving thanks is a sacrifice to God and it truly honors me. God is saying you and I honor him when we give thanks in all circumstances. Do you see that? 
This is what he's saying. It honors me when you give thanks. And it also is telling us that it's a sacrifice. And I don't know if you and I have seen this before, but the Lord said this is a sacrifice that pleases him. We talk about what kind of sacrifice would please the Lord. Um, what pleases God? What is God's will? What kind of sacrifice can I do that pleases him? God is saying right here, you want to know one? I'll tell you one right now. Gratitude. <laughs> Gratitude. Gratitude pleases me. When you express your grace, when you, when you express, express your gratitude, when you, when you express thanks, when you express gratefulness, uh, this pleases me. And the Lord says, I see you and I know it's a sacrifice. And I don't know if you've ever thought of your gratitude as a sacrifice because it's not easy to do. And because it's not easy to do, that makes it a sacrifice, right? If it's super easy, there's no sacrifice in that, is there? You've heard the, the song, there's no pain in the offering. There's got to be some pain in the offering. If something is like, you know, yeah, whatever, I got a couple quarters here, God, there you go. And what, there's no pain in the offering. There's, that's, like, that's, not, that's not a sacrifice. There is no sacrifice in that. And with the widow's might, Jesus pointed out, that woman, I don't care if she put in just a penny or whatever, the Roman coin, to her it was a lot. I saw how much of her heart she put in. That was a sacrifice. Sacrifice is something that's not easy to do. And, and this is important because the Lord's saying, when, when you are grateful, when you're expressing thanks, when you're giving thanks, even though you don't feel like it, even though it's not easy, the Lord's saying, I see your sacrifice. I know it's not easy, but I see you and you're doing my will and it pleases me, it honors me. And this is really uh, important. Uh, a last glaring one, and I need to bring this up because, again, if you're like me, uh, we would like to say that we are uh, gracious people. We've been forgiven. We forgive others. And uh, hopefully the grace of God has an overflowing effect in our life. But uh, I think if we're honest, we see things in our life that we forget to be grateful. We either overlook them or we don't express it. Uh, not just with God, but with others. Sometimes we fail to thank God for his goodness and his promises and everything he's done, everything he's doing, and everything he's about to do. We forget. We just overlook it or we are self-centered. We, we don't express our gratitude. And sometimes it's with others. We're trying to love God and love others. And sometimes we're not expressing our thanks and our gratitude toward others. And this is really important. A glaring example, you don't have to turn there, but you know the passage, you've heard it before. Uh, in Luke chapter 17, um, Jesus heals 10 lepers. Everyone say 10. 10 lepers. And to my knowledge, when I look at scripture, I could be wrong. I believe it's the only mass miracle recorded in scripture. A mass, we're like, of course he went through towns and healed that one and went over here and healed this one and then, you know, down the street. No, I'm talking in one place, one time, poof, all 10 of them, okay? Now here's the thing about these guys. These guys are living in a leper colony. These guys are outcasts. These guys are deteriorating. They're, the cities, uh, wherever you live, they would put the lepers downwind. Their community was downwind because they never wanted the wind from the leper community to blow onto you and to your town and your city. They put them down when these people had to live as these complete outcasts, getting the scraps of life. If you happen to be on a street and someone was walking by and there was a leper, they had to yell out, unclean, unclean. So you'd be like, oh, I'm taking a different street. Uh, literally, this is, this is how these people were. This leprosy has overcome them. They're living in this community as a bunch of outcasts. And Jesus, Jesus sees the 10 of them and he heals all 10 of them one time. It's amazing, miraculous. But here's the problem. Out of the 10, when he healed them, out of the 10, nine of them kept walking away. Nine of them kept walking away. And only one, only one returned with gratitude. It's amazing to me that these people were transformed from their skin falling apart to their community, their world, their out, everything that you can even imagine about these people. It's like horrendous. And now they have like the commercial, the oil of Olay skin. That's what these guys look at. They, they could do like hand commercials or something now. I mean, these guys are like, boom, all 10 of them. Wow. Like transform, new skin. Everything is as beautiful like that. But nine of them keep walking away. And only one of them comes back with gratitude. And Jesus said, all were healed. But why is it that only one, why only one has come back to give thanks? And I think that's what we do sometimes. See, Jesus has healed you too. 
And he's healed me too. He's healed us from the burden of our sins, the consequence of our sins. He's put his spirit inside of us. He's renewing our mind. There's a healing process. Make no mistake, the sanctification process of working with Jesus is an ongoing healing process. Amen? The whole journey is a healing process. It's a renewing process. It's a transformation. It's God working proactively in your life and in mine. He's changing things in us, making us new day by day, being transformed, and yet we too sometimes can be like the nine going, thank you, I'm going this way, and forget to come back and express gratitude. And there's so many examples in the Bible of some who forgot gratitude and others who turned around and expressed it. And one that's so glaring, I'll tell you what, this one is so glaring, um, and we're going to jump into our Psalms passage. <laughs> How many are waiting for Psalms? <laughs> um, <laughs> this one is so glaring that Jesus said, out of any gratitude story in the Bible, he, he marks this one and says, this one, this gratitude story, is going to be shared all over the world for the rest of time. Everywhere the gospel is shared around the globe, this gratitude story is going to go along with it. Now, he never said that about all the other stories. Of course, they're in the Bible, but he didn't say, oh, this guy's story is going to go all around the world. Wherever they go. It's the only time he says definitively, everywhere the gospel goes, this gratitude story is going to go. And it's a gratitude situation, you might remember, of Mary sitting at a meal with Jesus and a bunch of visitors. And at the meal, Mary gets up and pours what is so special to her, this prized possession. It's worth a year's wage. So it's ladies, if you take fifty, eighty thousand $80,000 bottle of perfume or 90, whatever that is, and just pour it all out on Jesus. And here's what's going on. She is pouring, as she's pouring out her perfume, she's pouring out her heart. How many of you know that where your treasure is, your heart will be also? right? So she's pouring out her heart, and other people are appalled. They're appalled. They are shocked, and they're mad, and they're actually arguing about this, which goes to show you that even believers can misunderstand what gratitude is all about in the first place. She's pouring it out, and Jesus is smiling, saying, this is beautiful, and the apostles are angry and arguing about it, and Jesus is like, how can you miss the point? Gratitude is clear, gratitude is beautiful. And they're like, yeah, but not that kind of gratitude. Gratitude shouldn't be like, and they're, they're, they're all mad and bent out of shape about her expression of gratitude. And these were even apostles who were missing gratitude and what it is and how beautiful it was and what it does to the Lord, the smile. So this lady uh, pours it out. She knew where her heart was, her treasure was also. And Jesus said, this story of her gratitude will be shared around the whole world. I think that's amazing. Um, to see uh, this gratitude story, and then we have lepers walking away. And everyone, when it comes to the Lord, has a completely different expression of gratitude. But I would encourage you, be grateful people. Let's be grateful sons and daughters of God. Let's express our gratitude to him. And uh, again, I, I, I believe some lack breakthrough in certain areas of your walk, and gratitude might be the glaring component. Expressing your gratitude to the Lord might be your missing component. Um, in this psalm right here, it's going to talk about our thanksgiving. And it's going to talk about what thanksgiving with the Lord does, how we, how we correspond with the Lord through the element of thanksgiving. And this one has to do with, I, I believe, um, it, through the lens of breakthrough. Uh, if some of you in the room are not really sensing the presence of God, everyone say presence of God. The presence of God all the way through the Bible in the Old Testament, God traveled with the people of Israel by a cloud by day and fire by night to show them my presence is with you. God made a promise to his people early on and the promise was regarding his presence. This is God's words. God says my presence will be with you. I will tabernacle. I will make my dwelling among you. I am going to be literally the presence of the living God himself literally in the camp of the people, in, your, in our home, in our community. This is God's promise, his presence. This is not an Old Testament only idea, the presence of God in the New Testament in the form of the spirit of God, which the Bible says don't quench the spirit. That, that means he's in you, but down to a little flicker, don't quench him by our lifestyle, but fan into flame and let the spirit of God have residence in our life. The presence of God is a key thing. And for some of you, if you're lacking breakthrough in the area where you you're not sensing God's presence in your life. The presence of God is not just a feeling. 
but I will tell you in the present, uh, presence of God is evident in your life, you can't help but sense his presence. God is overwhelming this way. And this passage here talks about the presence of God and how the presence of God in your life and in my life, how it actually comes about. What is a pathway? What is a, a manner? What is a direction? How do, we, how do we come into the presence of God and what does that even look like? And Psalm 100 is a, is a very powerful passage that talks about the presence of God and it uses the pathway of thanksgiving, the pathway of gratefulness, the pathway of gratitude. And again, that's why I believe God wants to do breakthrough today because some of you, maybe this is your area of breakthrough. Like, Lord, I, I believe in you. I just don't really sense your presence in my life. The Lord would say, well, I want you to draw near to me and I will draw near to you. The Bible says the promise of God. God wants his presence known uh, in our life. And, and, and this is saying how gratitude is a pathway. Let's, let's look at this today together. Uh, Psalm 100, and we're going to do verses 1 through 5. It says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever, and his faithfulness continues through all generations. This is saying some pretty cool stuff. Quick summary of what it is saying is, number one, God made you. Uh, You're not here by circumstance. You're here by God's sovereign design. God gave you your birth date. He gave you your DNA. His sovereignty has you sitting in this chair this morning in this room, in this family, talking about him. God made you very intentionally. That's something to be thankful for. It says that we are his people. We are his children through Christ Jesus, but we are the people of God. So you're not just a creation. You're an adopted son or daughter of God. That is something to be profoundly grateful for. It says we're the sheep of his pasture. That means he's the good shepherd in your life and that he does what a good shepherd does. We're the sheep of his pasture. That means he protects us and that he provides for us and that he leads us. These are all scriptural promises that the good shepherd does in his life because we are the sheep of his pasture. Great reasons to be thankful. And he's saying, since we are thankful, it says, so shout for joy, worship and praise him. In our gratitude, it's saying to shout for joy and worship and praise him. Now, some of you might say this morning, well, Pastor B., Uh, that's not my style. I don't do that. And I'm suggesting to you that the Bible doesn't tell you this is a style thing. For those of you who are introverted, this isn't for you. Skip skip to Psalm 101 for you. Uh, But Psalm 100 is for the extroverts, and Psalm 102 is for the... No, it doesn't say that in the Bible. Um, Listen, if you're grateful and you're thankful for the shepherd, the lover of your soul, the father who adopted you into this family, it's saying here is our response for simply who God is, his nature, and what, what he's done for us is to shout for joy, worship and praise his name. And I believe this is another area. Listen, some don't have breakthrough because you're really not drawing near to God and maybe you've never shouted out praise to his name. Maybe, maybe you've never uh, done this. Lord, I'm, I'm thankful and I want to say thank you. Maybe you've never done that. Maybe you've said, God, you are good. Maybe you've never done that. Maybe you've never stepped into this adoration and this praise that the Bible is saying to do through thankfulness because it is so important that we do this. So here's why. It says that you and I actually enter into God's courts, that God is in the courts and we're on the outside looking at the temple, and we're coming into his courts. And what does that mean? It means we're coming into his presence. That's where God is. And we're outside. And it says our pathway into the presence of God, our pathway into the presence is exactly what this says. It's thanks and praise. This is what the Bible says. We enter God's presence with thanks and praise. Now, what's interesting about this, if you were to do a study on this in the Bible, you're going to see a lot more, and we don't have time to get into them today, but I do want to share a couple of brief things about this, that 
thanks. You don't often think of thanksgiving along with praise. Praise is adoration to God. It's a form of worship. But we don't always think of thanks and praise together. But I would suggest to you the Bible oftentimes puts thanks and praise together. And it's really important because if you're thankful, you express it. Um, many of you, some of you, will go home and watch some uh, football this afternoon. By the way, Joey, in the announcements, he had a 49ers hat on. That's not cool. So you guys, make sure you talk to him after service about that. The video was great, but you've got to lose the hat. Um, but, but all I have to say is, uh, you know, when you're watching a football game or whatever your sport is and your team scores, you're like, yeah, people are jumping up and down. They're wearing the colors of their team. They're like jumping up and down. They're like, woo, they are praising the team. They're part of a, something bigger on the field and, and they're living vicariously through and they, and they jump up and they celebrate whatever it is. If somebody you know gets it, you're like, yes, that's awesome. You're thankful, you're grateful, but there's an expression that comes out and it's some form of praise. That happens even in a football stadium where people are praising. They're not praising God. They're praising the team. They're going, awesome, let's go. Come on, we can do this. We got, they're praising. So thankfulness is in fact tied to praise and it should be in our lives as well because the Bible says this is actually how we enter into his presence. You and I enter the presence of God through thanksgiving and praise. And it's just amazing to me because some of you might have that sense, well, these other areas of my life, I'm growing in knowledge and I'm learning about the Lord and I'm, I'm learning maybe how to serve him and to trust him and, and these are all wonderful components and aspects to maturity in Christ and you walk with Christ. But growing in grace is also expressing gratitude, which is God's will for you. It's also the pathway into his presence, which this scripture is saying, and, and some of you may not be taking those steps. Well, the gratitude I'm not expressing and the praise I'm not doing. And by the way, I'm not really sensing his presence either. Maybe you'll see in this passage where these things are kind of tied together, where the Lord sees that you honor him when you, when you show gratitude. It, the Lord says it's, it's his will for your life, but it also honors him when you do it. And it also is a pathway into his presence. That's how important Uh, gratitude and thanksgiving is. So if we are thankful, we will praise. We shouldn't be thankful and be silent. We should be thankful and praise. The Bible has this expression. And uh, yeah, praise is not a feeling, guys. Thanks and praise are not a feeling. It's really a choice. Even praising God is a choice. Do you know that? A lot of people are, I don't feel like praising God because I'm kind of bummed out right now and I got stuff going on in my life. I get it. But listen, Praise is not a feeling, it's a choice. Just like thanksgiving is not a feeling, it's a choice. Um, And and it's a choice whether you and I want to grow in grace in this calling in Scripture. And if we had time, I would show you a ton more where the growing in grace includes expressions of gratitude. It simply does. You can't walk around it or dodge it. You you might say, hey, I'm growing in all these other areas, and that's wonderful, but grace is a glaring one. And when we grow in grace, gratitude is an aspect of thanksgiving and our praise is tied to it. Our praise is actually tied to it. Um, So when you thank God, you're actually inviting his presence into your situation. When you thank God, remember it says, come to the Lord with whatever is causing anxiety in your life. Whatever the thing is, don't don't be anxious about anything. Bring it to the Lord with prayer and supplication with, with thanksgiving. In this passage here, we're saying the same thing. We come into God's presence with all this stuff. We come with thanksgiving and praise. Uh, so if you're a note taker, here's, a, here's a, another key point this morning, is that thanks and praise invite God's presence into our situations. Thanks and praise actually invite God's presence into our situations. And some of these situations that are causing anxiety or causing stress or causing uh, doubt or lack of it, whatever it might be in our, in our lives that we're going through, um, thanks and praise invite the presence of God. And I'm telling you, what, no matter what battle you're fighting, no matter what struggle you have, the best way to fight that battle is with God's presence, with God in your camp, amen? You don't want to fight a battle without God in your camp. You want to get as close to God as humanly possible. Now listen, if you're a Christ follower, you already have the Lord in your life. I'm not saying that. 
I'm saying that the presence of God in a tangible and a more overwhelming way where you're like, God, we're doing this together. And we come before him with thanksgiving and praise. And the Bible is saying right here that he inhabits, inhabits the praises of his people. Um, I remember one time being on the job and things were going absolutely terrible um, on every level. And I was like ready to quit. It was really terrible. And I remember this scripture and I'm like, oh, I, the last thing I feel like doing is praising right now. I feel like, you know, punching somebody, you know. Um, but, but the point is, the Bible was telling me this. And I didn't feel, I didn't feel like being thankful. I didn't feel like expressing praise. But I remember we had one of these fire stairways at this job. And I ended up going in there and closing the door. And again, I wanted to punch a wall, but I didn't. I'm like, Lord, you are good. You're good, God. And thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for this. And as, listen, as I began to do this thing that made no cognitive sense whatsoever, as I began to do this, I began to sense that I was entering his courts with thanksgiving and praise. I I was beginning to sense that God was inhabiting my praises. And what happened at this time in this, I'll never forget it for the rest of my life, this fire stairwell on one of the worst days of my life, that God made a beautiful exchange with me where he took away ashes for beauty. Amen? Has God ever done that with you? Where he takes away ashes for beauty. That's what he does when we come into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. He completely changes dispositions, heart burdens, worries, doubts, fears, concerns, anxieties. God does this great and beautiful exchange, but it happens through gratitude and praise, not because you feel like it, that because God is good and he's worthy of it. And when you do it, even though you don't feel like it, it's a sacrifice and God says, I see you. I see you making that sacrifice. And guess what? That's my will and it honors me. And God steps in and you experience his, his presence. Um, the last thing I want to share, and I'm just going to summarize this really quick. But um, second, we don't have time to read it. I was hoping to read it with you guys today. But Second Chronicles 20 if you guys can make a note of it, read it later, Second Chronicles 20. It's an, it's an amazing passage. I just want to summarize it for you guys. Again, I was hoping to go through it, but it's a little longer than we have, have time for today. It's an amazing, glaring passage on exactly what we're talking about today. And, and it's this picture where Israel finds out that they are surrounded not by one army, but by multiple armies who all join forces together. Surprise! <laughs> They didn't see this one coming. And now they realize, oh, great, not one army, but multiple armies, and they're surrounding us. This is not good. This is not good. And, and so they, these other armies have decided to declare war against Israel. Israel is overwhelmed by this. The passage says that they are praying, and they say, quote, quote unquote, to the Lord, Lord, we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us, and we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you, God. We don't even know what to do. And King Jehoshaphat, in the passage, he's got a lot of feelings about this. He's pretty overwhelmed, but listen, he doesn't function in his feelings. He makes a choice. He makes a choice. And he says, Lord, we're distressed, and we don't know what's going to happen, but one thing we will do, listen, is we are going to stand in your presence. Would you repeat that with me? We're going to stand in your presence presence. This is Old Testament and New. Lord, your presence. Well, God's everywhere, right? But yes, Lord, we have a problem and we're going to intentionally, we're going to intentionally stand in your presence. We talked about how to get into the presence of God earlier. We just looked at Psalm 100 that we enter through praise and thanksgiving. Israel says we're going to stand in your presence. And so this is really important because these guys are so distressed and don't know what else to do. So Lord, we're going to stand in your presence. We're going to see how they do it in a second. We're going to see how Israel stands in the presence of God when they're surrounded by a whole bunch of enemies. And maybe you're feeling a bit distressed, and maybe you need to stand in the presence of God right now, whatever you're going through in life. Whatever struggle or doubt or concern, maybe you need to learn how to stand in God's presence because you are surrounded with a battle that is like Israel. You didn't sign up for it, and you didn't ask for it, but it's a bigger problem than you can carry right now, and it seems to be surrounding you and encroaching on you. And maybe like Israel, you have to do what they did. Lord, I don't know what we're going to do. All I know is we're going to stand in your presence right now because we can't afford not to, amen? We can't afford not to stand in the presence of God in times 
uh, like these. And it says in verse 13 of 2 Chronicles 20, it says, All the men of Judah with their wives and their children and their little ones stood there before the Lord. This is entire families, husband, wife, older kids, younger kids, little babies. We're all going to stand. Everyone in Israel, we're all going to stand before you, God. This is a big battle we're going through. We are going to stand before you because being in your presence is the best place we can be right now. See, other people get very cognitive. Presence of the Lord, what are you talking about? That's very subjective to a feeling. We need to just go sharpen our weapons. And, and, and Israel's going, yeah, this kind of battle, guys, you better stop everything. You better stop everything. Put everything down for a minute. You better go stand in the presence of the Lord because that's the only place that matters right now. It's the only place that matters is standing in the presence of the Lord. And that's what they do. They stand in the presence of the Lord, their whole family, wives, children, little ones, babies, everyone. And it's not just the leaders. It's everybody standing in the presence of the Lord. And the Lord says, the Lord sees them do this. The Lord sees them do this. And the Lord says to them, read this later. Okay, guys, Second Chronicles 20. The Lord says, don't worry about this massive army because uh, you know what? What you thought was your battle, it's my battle now. It's my, you stood in my presence. You stood in my presence. It's not your battle. It's my battle. Thank you. I'll take that. And Israel's floored. They don't know what to do. They're going to get crushed any day now. But they, instead of preparing one way, they stepped into the Lord's presence. And the Lord says, I see you. I see your sacrifice of praise. I'm smiling on it. I'm about to fight your battle for you. And you're going to get to watch and see it. It says, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon them, and then all of a sudden they get some instructions on what to do. But here's the fourth and final point this morning. This is important. If you are God's people, and that means a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, Jesus takes away the barrier of sin that blocks relationship and intimacy with God, only Jesus can do it. If you've come to Jesus and say, thank you for your atoning work on the cross, I believe, I receive, I turn and follow, then his provision becomes your provision. And he wipes away every sin and he puts his spirit in you and he writes his, your name in the Lamb's Book of Life as we turn and follow him. This is where, what he does for us. And, and, and you become uh, what the Bible says that instead of just God's creation, you become his children. That through the atoning work of Jesus that we become children of God and you are God's people. And if you are God's people this morning, if that's you, if you've made that decision for Christ and surrendered your life to his lordship, if you are God's people, then guess what? then your battles, your battles are God's battles. Your battles are God's battles. And you need to know that. Um, because Israel learned this today. they like, we're going to die any second now. And they learned to stand in God's presence. And God made it very clear. You are my people. Your battles are my battles. So here's what they did. Even though their battle was God's battle, this is still what they did. There's God's part and our part. Everyone say God's part and our part. There's God's part and our part. And this is what God said. Don't worry about the battle. I got it. But, but this is what you're going to do. You're still going to show up for battle. You're still going to dress for battle. You're still going to face the enemy. God says, go out and face them. Face them. Don't run home. Go, go that way. Go, go forward. So you show up. You dress up. You suit up. Face the enemy. And you're still going to stand firm. You're not going to retreat. You're going to stand firm. That's, that's what you're going to do. And then after that, you get to watch. You get to watch God win for you. You get to watch God win on your behalf. So you suit up, you pray up, you prep up, stand up, you believe, get fired up in faith. God, you said it, I believe it. And all of a sudden, God's like, you watch me fight your battle for you. And the people of Judah didn't go off their feelings. They went off of this. And this is what they did, guys. Remember remember the presence of God? They were learning something powerful about the presence of God. They leaned forward in praise. Now, this is crazy. You're surrounded by a massive army. There's many of them. And there's, you only have one army. You've got multiple armies joining together. You know you've got no way out. You stand in God's presence instead of sharpening your weapons. And God says, I see you. I'm smiling on you. I got this. I'm going to fight the battle for you. They show up, they stand up, they suit up, and they stand firm. God begins to do something profound. But listen, they are so confident in the Lord, so confident in the Lord, regardless of their circumstances, they don't just go out front with cannons and tanks and rocket launchers. They don't go out there with catapults. They don't go out there with their cannons. They don't go out there with their uh, biggest soldiers out front. They don't go out there with their swords drawn this way. You know how they got out, went out there? 
They went out there with their worship team. <laughs> they went into this insane battle with people singing and praising God in front of the army. Now that defies all logic. That defies all reason. If you and I were going to fight a battle, we would not send the worship team out front. But listen, if God is going to fight a battle, you start with the worship team out front, amen? Because the worship and praise and thanksgiving invite his very presence into our situation. That's amazing. So this is what it says. It goes on to say that Israel went into the battle with the musicians and the singers out front. And then the song that they're all singing, the song that everyone's singing together, is a song of thanks says, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Going into war, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. And imagine thanking God for a victory before the victory is even, uh, is the base? Uh, imagine thanking God for a victory before the victory is even started. Let me just turn this up there, okay. Um, imagine thanking God for a victory before a war even started. Do you see the faith of these people? They're thanking God, the, the battle didn't even start. They're going out there thanking God for the victory before it even begins. And I believe God wants to show you and I how to do the same thing in our lives, to start thanking him for victories before some of these battles are even fought, amen? Does that make sense? Thanking God for, listen, you can thank God in appreciation for something you've received. But you can also thank God in anticipation for what he's about to do. You can also thank God for what he's already done for you. He's already given you eternity. He's already paid a price for you. We can never pay. We, we thank God for that future, the present provision, but the future reality. We thank him for that. We thank him for the things that he's doing in our life right now and he's already done that we get. But listen, we can already thank him for victory in battles that haven't even really begun yet. And Israel learned how to do that. And that's when God begins to fight battles on our behalf. That's what he does right here. I don't know about you, but are you seeing a glaring reality of the need for gratefulness? Are you guys seeing it right here? There's this glaring thing that gratitude is a key component to your breakthrough in mind. The gratitude and thankfulness and praise are a key aspect of God's presence fighting your battles for you. It's a key aspect. And this is throughout the Bible. Paul and Silas are in jail in an inner cell, locked up in shackles, and they can't get out, and it's not looking good. They were already beaten with sticks and rods and thrown in there, and what do they do? Well, how would you feel? You would feel terrible. You'd probably be mad and complain, right? That's what we would do. I didn't deserve this. Beat up, knocked around, stuck in an inner cell. That's not what they do. They learn how to give thanks in all circumstances, even though they were beaten down. And in the middle of the night, when in the middle of jail, you hear some men having mental breakdowns, other people snap, some grown men starting to cry because their life is about to be over. Not Paul and Silas. In the middle of it all, you begin to hear praise. You begin to hear praise in that dark, cold prison cell block. Paul and Silas start praising God in the middle of a crazy circumstance because they're not going off their feeling. They're going off the reality. And they're going with thanksgiving and praise. We're going to enter God's presence right now. You're like, Paul, you're in the middle of a jail cell. What are you talking about? Watch and see. We're going to praise him. We're going to praise him. We're going to thank him. We're going to praise him. We're going to get louder. We're going to get louder. And as they begin to get louder and they start praising God in the middle of the jail cell, guess what? They entered God's presence. You know what God did? He showed up. You know what happened when God showed up? The place shook. You know what happened when the place shook? Doors busted wide open and shackles came off because that's what happens in the presence of God. Praise and thanks is the pathway. In our lives too, praise and thanksgiving is the pathway. Shackles fall off. There is breakthrough. There is revelation. There is victories to be had. And I just want to encourage you. Some of you today, this might not be your main thing, but if you're like me, I needed this message because I, I, I believe there's some battles ahead and there's victories that need to be won. Gratitude is the key. Gratitude in the presence of God are key. And if, if that's you this morning, why don't you stand up and thank God with me this morning. This has been a presentation of Valley Metro Church. To hear more messages or to support future podcasts, please visit us at valleymetrochurch.com.